for as well. And hello, we'll... hello. Martin, are you there? <laughs> hello. Hi, Martin, how are you doing? I'm good, and you? I'm good, so thank you for joining us. Well, I'm spending the whole day with Hans Lildensfeld on various calls. Mm -hmm. I spoke to him earlier, and now we're gonna to talk to three of the designers that have worked with him, starting with you. So Martin, tell us first of all where you are. I'm, uh, I'm at my home in, uh, in Utrecht in the Netherlands. And um, what is that behind you? That's a piece of art, is it? Yeah, it's a, it's a painting by, um, by Toon Hawks. I, th I think all Dutch people know him, but I don't know how internationally known he is, but uh, it's one of my favorite artists, actually. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Martin. Who are you and what do you do? Um, yeah, what I'm doing, that's, that always depends a little bit on who's listening. Like um, for design, I could call myself probably still a designer, but, uh, but yeah, I, if you know my work a little bit, then you know it's somewhere somewhere between art and design and everybody always uh, debates about what's the difference and whatsoever. But anyway, so, something uh, uh, like that. Um, so people would probably know the clock that I made for uh, for um, also in the in Schiphol Airport, Amsterdam Airport. There's this big clock in which it seems as if there's a man inside. That's one of my works. Um, uh, the clay furniture. Um, I, I just have this miniature here. So like the the clay miniature chair. Well, some people know about that one. Smoke, that was actually my graduation uh, project, burnt uh, furniture um, uh, in which I literally charcoaled pieces of furniture, which I um, treated with epoxy resin so that they were usable again. So that's uh, briefly some of my uh, works you might know. And I certainly know smoke because uh, I, you burnt one of my pieces of furniture. I shipped it to you. Do you remember? We had a <laughs> a big wooden bench that had been in our family for a long time. And my father gave it to me and I was very disappointed how I, this beautiful piece of antique furniture that I remembered from my childhood was actually really ugly. <laughs> and said, can you improve it for me? Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, definitely. You, you are an early adapter. You, um, uh, you also were there when I burned this uh, grand piano for Lee Edelcourt. And this week I heard that this is going to the museum collection of the Van Abbe Museum in Eindhoven. So, uh, so it's uh, still, uh, still going there. And you've also contributed a couple of movies to our virtual design festival. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. When, when, when the corona kicked in and everybody was, uh, was away. And so I thought like, well, let's, let's go on. Um, the, yeah, let's make a few short movies. I anyway do that every now and then. Uh, it's not kind of my core business or so to make, make small movies, but sometimes uh, with, um, uh, when, when there's an occasion, I like to make a small movie. And I also did that for the, the, for the design festival indeed. And how has this pandemic time been for you? What have you been doing? Um, well, for, for me, it was uh, really nice. I mean, uh, I, it didn't hit me that, uh, that hard. So that's easier to, to say that it's uh, nice because of, um, I see also around me a lot of people in the cultural um, industry. Um, they are very, hit very hard. And especially in Holland, I have been very critical on, on that there was no support for the cultural and art um, scene. And they were, um, it was very difficult to cope with it. But if I look at me personally, I really, uh, I, I totally had a good time, really. I like doing nothing. And uh, well, that was also uh, part of the game. There was nobody asking anything uh, from me. And uh, yeah, well, it, it, I really uh, enjoyed it. The, the silence, uh, the being at home, um, I totally had a good time. And Hans, tell us about how you first started to work with Martin. Um, you know, Moi was founded in 2000 and uh, I entered Moi after three months. And then one year later, or two years later, there suddenly was Marte with his uh, burnt furniture, furniture, smoke furniture. It was introduced by Marcel as the new piece what we should show in uh, in, in Milan, and actually that was at one of those pre-Milano uh, parties, what we always organized at my house here in Breda. Uh, that's, where, that's where I met Marta for the first time, actually, yeah. And I think you've prepared a little presentation about 
your yes. student yes. master, right? Do you yes. want to show that now? Okay, okay. But just let me see, then I have to go here this, and then I have to go here. So I, I would like to start here. This is our presentation in 2007 in Milan during the Salone del uh, Mobile. And uh, it was called, uh, may I have your attention please? And Marte, together we got, and I changed the screen I see, and together we got this wonderful uh, award, the Milano Design Award for this installation as being the best, the best, the best concept. And this picture is made just before it all started. And we are using here the chairs which you designed for this event, what was actually a part of a bigger thing called May I Have Your Attention. May I, May I Have Your Attention was uh, the, the cry for the 2,800 exhibitors in Milan asking for uh, attention. And that was the concept. And then I now move to the next. And uh, this is where we just talked about. This is probably the most beautiful picture ever made of a smoke piece. Uh, this is where I was aware of Mark de Baas as really a great designer, who I saw developing through the years from designer into a full artist. This was a very specific night Anna van der Zwaage is one of my very, very, very best friends. She really helps me with uh, how to move forward with my business. And uh, on the right hand side, you see Eric Kessels. He is uh, enormous uh, in uh, communication. And exactly this night, immediately for or after this picture was made, they said, Hans, you have to go to Milan in 2017 with Martin Baas. And, uh, you know, uh, I had certain kind of other ideas. I was not sure. And then instant, I checked the website of Maarten. And on, the Maarten, on Maarten's website was great. Martin Baas is not interested in mass production. And uh, so I said, Anne, please do your best, but I don't believe in it. Now, Anne did her job. And... Uh, the, still, the first still the case, by the way, I st I'm still not interested in mass production. It's <laughs> it's kind of a necessary evil to make some mass production in order to make <laughs> to express myself. So uh, it still stands. Yeah, but I'm very happy that Anne convinced yourself to do this installation altogether, you know. Yeah. And um, so we decided to make it much better than a few chairs. It became an entire installation. Um, and uh, um, the main part of the installations were those horns, which all were whispering and begging for energy and begging for attention. And uh, here you do see the, uh, the horns in production. This is then the next slide, how they were shown during the uh, installation, the solo exhibition of your work, Maarte, in the Groningen Museum in f February 2017. And uh, th th this is a picture made as uh, at, 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 the, at the after party. And you know, I really feel very, very proud that I'm there in between the star mm -hmm. designers of this year and Andreas Bloom, the director of the Groningen Museum. It's actually uh, still on um, display as we speak. It's in display in Lausanne in Switzerland, the, the installation in the Mudak uh, Museum. So uh, if, if people are from Lausanne listening, they could still have a look there. Maybe also a nice opportunity to visit since uh, the, the borders are open again. Yeah, yeah, sure. Now, then this is how it looked in Milan. Um, this is in uh, Zone Centrale. This is beneath the, the highways, uh, the railway. And um, this was our cocktail party, the 5th of April. And then completely unexpected, again, we were invited. And uh, this is the last picture, what could be made with an iPhone because all batteries were done. Mm -hmm. But here the award is handed over. 
And then, of course, we had this product, product Maarten, it, it was uh, a chair, but all the people who approached me, they said, Hans, we also need a wooden chair, we also need a stackable chair, we need a chair with armrest, we need uh, a stool, and uh, what is difficult to do for an artist, but, but uh, easy, now difficult for an artist, but easy for a designer is to do that all. So uh, you did it, and uh, later you created this this picture. Maybe you can tell something about this picture, Maarten. Yeah, it was kind of funny. Like it's um, actually this year, I'm exactly 18 years graduated, so I'm 18 years professional, so to say. So now I finally am a mature uh, designer, so to say. But um, but nevertheless, like I like to to play with um, with uh, conventions of, of design, and uh, as I said, like I'm I'm actually more an artist who expresses himself in in design, and that's why I'm also not so interested in mass production because of um, yeah, for me it's already done. When I when I make one piece, it's actually enough, and the rest uh, I'm not so interested in. Uh, if if there is one or a thousand, doesn't make a def difference for me. Nevertheless, like I've been always, uh, first I did the burnt furniture. After that, I made the clay furniture, which um, which looks like as if a child has been playing around a little bit with uh, with clay. And um, in the background of this picture, you also see a kind of a um, assemble, assembled piece with all kinds of found objects. I made a chair and it all always had this kind of childish uh, approach. And to make a stackable chair to me felt really like, oh, that's really, a sign of maturity, you know, like like to make something stackable, really industrial, and um, and like that. So um, so I kind of imagine like as if I was a kind of a child playing in his um, in his attic or so, on his, or in his shed, uh, to to experiment with fire and experiment with clay and experiment with all kinds of materials. And all of a sudden, I made a stackable chair. So I made, I imagined a mom being very proud of his uh, of her son. Um, so. I asked my mom to pose for this uh, for this picture and uh, with the quote like, oh, Martin, my son, you made a stackable chair. Um, so it's my actual mom. She doesn't normally dress like this, but uh, but for the picture we did. Beautiful picture by uh, Floor Knapen. Um, so yeah, that's that's the, the background of it. Uh, I thought like, oh, let's let's make a picture like that. It's uh, it, it would uh, fit the, the concept. OK. And then here we are showing uh... In another way, the entire family. This was during um, an exhibition in the Netherlands, a, a object Rotterdam. Yeah, here you know, like um, that's uh, that's what I like um, because of we're talking about mass production or not. Like um, when you approached me to do something, I thought like, oh, Lenskov, that's a, that's a um, an office furniture maker. Um, well, office furniture sounds very boring, of course. A year before that, you made also the boring collection, which I also really liked, by the way. Um, but I thought like, okay, normally I don't make mass production because of normally then uh, you just have to make a kind of a crappy design for a crappy producer and I'm totally not interested in it. But first of all, Lansfeld always approaches uh, Milan and their presentation in a very artistic way. So that's that's what I'm sensitive for. But also I saw like the, the fact that it was mass produced, I saw as an opportunity to make something unique like that. So that's why all the little bags, they are a little bit different, you know, like it's, it's as if as if already somebody is sitting on the chair without somebody sitting on the chair, you know, They're, they already are a kind of a personality in itself. So on this picture, you also can see as a total, if, if you have 10 of them, in other words, if there's a mass of it, then, then it becomes an installation in itself. So that was my purpose. So it's not about one chair, but it's about the, the set of it, which is always a unique set of, uh, of furniture. So, um, so that also explains why I actually did want to do it in this, uh, in this way. But anyway, continue, Hans. <laughs> yes, and, uh, and then we showed it also in Milan in uh, 2019, you know, and... Uh, I love this pose because uh, it's, uh, it's 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 uh, it's really Marte, you know, taking the vacuum cleaner and, and and supporting the team with getting it all cleaned in time, you know. And then, uh, you know, as I explained before, you know, the people who use our furniture, 
that are cosmopolitans who are aware, who are conscious, who love the environment, who love architecture, who, who love music, design. And uh, yeah, in this way, I love this picture where the furniture is moved, is used in, in Moscow, a project by V12 architects. Here it is uh, used in Amsterdam in the eight fonts. And you see it's stackable, it's in, uh, it's in uh, transparent paint oak wood. Here a combination with a table of Atelier Verlieshout, the shaker table. And then uh, now most probably the most important picture who's coming now. This is actually how I always want Maarten wants to see, <laughs> <laughs> laughing and happy. <laughs> and this was a few weeks ago uh, at the opening here in the gallery where we presented uh, furniture designed by our mutual friend, uh, Fabio Novembre. Yeah. Maarten? Yeah, the, 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 that was nice. Actually, uh, about the stackable chair, um, the difference between the stackable chair and the and the non-stackable chair is the um, the legs uh, like they stick out you know that's why you can uh, you can stick and stack them but and normally um, it's a kind of a concession to the design if you make it make it stackable it it mostly looks less nice um but i must say i'm actually sitting on one of them um in my house and i deliberately chose for the stackable one because i like them even more for a reason like they become a kind of a I don't know if I can show that. Like, they can become a kind of a grasshopper. You know, you see the the leg is sticking out, so it becomes kind of a grasshopper uh, creature, which I kind of uh, like. So, so even if they weren't stackable, then probably I still would choose for uh, for that uh, design. So uh, my first stackable chair is even uh, uh, has a double reason to exist in that sense. <laughs> okay, Martins. Marcus, this were my slides. Okay, do you want to unshare your presentation then? So Martin, you said that you, you're not interested in, in mass production. Why is that? Well, there's not really um, a reason. It's not really like uh, anti or so. It's, it's just like, um, I don't tend to do that. Like, um, um, uh, in 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 the Instagram description, uh, it said now like uh, I'm an artist born in the body of a designer, which is actually kind of how I indeed feel it. Like in the first instance, I want to express myself, um, and I think design for me is a, a very good way to to do that because of, it has certain restrictions. Um, uh, it, it it has a, a at a certain boundaries within you can move, but then still I like to. Um, um, use it as a form of expression rather than to make the best um, uh, industrial chair or so. So like also what many designers say that in the end you would like to stand to, to have your product in every living room. I've never had that as a goal. It's, I, I don't mind if it's in somebody else's uh, living room to, to be honest. I just want to make a chair or any other product um, um, and and then it, it it gets somewhere, but but it starts within my interest to make something. So that's why um, uh, I don't mind if it ends up um, in in a mass production or or in a limited edition. Um, of course, you need to sell in order to make new work. So so there is, should be a kind of a business model uh, behind it. But that's uh, for me the second the second step, and not where it comes uh, from. So uh, so yeah, I think that's uh, that's how it is, and also. Um, uh, on a certain moment, I, I, I did quite regularly, I made shows in, uh, in Milan and, um, and they were always a bit different than the rest, let's put it like that. And um, that attracted also a lot of industri industrial um, uh, 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 companies who, who really made their money in in kind of crappy ways with 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 stupid products, and then they would ask me to make also something for them, um, and then they would use that more as a kind of a promotion tool rather than to make a genuine product. 
um, and that's exactly what what Hans doesn't do. Like like there's a there's a good story, and uh, and uh, yeah, I could also make this whole installation in Milan um, with with all those uh, speakers. Um, it was about attention, you know, like uh, not only attention in Milan, but just attention in uh, in general. Like um, um, I think getting attention and and sharing attention is kind of the it became kind of uh, as more valuable as money, you know, like like you you want to be you want to share your idea and you want to be heard and you want to be liked and you want to and and the other way around you you listen to others you like others so there's a kind of a whole economy of attention going on and that was the statement I wanted to make in um, in uh, in Milan so I I really liked it that that was the whole holistic approach of Landsfeld in order to make this uh, chair so that's why I um, I. That's why I like to approach it like uh, like that. And Hans, what Martin has just said is a is a criticism that's often made of the whole uh, design industry that you have these brands and they work with all the same designers and the designers work with all the same brands and the, the products are not really products, they're marketing tools. And sometimes they go into production, often they don't go into production. Um, how do you avoid that as the head of a, your own brand what is different about the way you do things? Yeah, um, that, that, that's a difficult question. You know, uh, actually, I, I, I do my own thing, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not comparing my company with uh, the other companies, actually, you know. So I'm just doing my thing. I believe in my own values. I believe that our product should be timeless. Uh, authentic, that they, they, they should be innovative. And um, I work with, with most of the de designers I'm still working with, I already started working when they were very young and when they were in the start of their career. Um, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the fact the fact that you that you don't have a clear answer to that means that you really are totally embedded with this idea that yeah. it's, it's yeah. self-speaking that it's that it should be like that. But yeah. I think it's pretty unique that um, uh, that a producer uh, approaches uh, approaches uh, the the production in such a way. Uh, all, always your your presentations in in Milan has always been really great exhibitions. They could have been copy paste to a museum show, which actually yeah. also happens, like what we just said. Yeah. But um, and uh, yeah, but for you, it's probably not even a, a business model or or um, or an idea. It's it's just you yeah. just do it by yourself, and uh, yeah. that's why it's so good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's actually, actually the, the presentations in Milan, they first uh, started as a, a certain kind of team building. Um, you know, people go to the Ardennes to create a solid team, but we thought, okay, let's go to, to Milan. And, and uh, we were always happy with the attention and we had a lot of fun. But through the years, of course, it changed. It became, we were spending much more money and uh, it became much more uh, a serious thing and uh, yeah and it became of course as a company want to survive and as a company of course we we need we need sales um, and th that's also the, the biggest compliment what i can get you know the most beautiful thing is when i do see my products really in use but it is not so that we develop a certain kind of uh, image product which we are going to show in Milan to cover actually a lot of bad products what we have. It's not like that, no. It's always full of passion, you know. It's my ambition to create a beautiful product. Every product what we create should be beautiful, really. And Martin, on this collection that you designed for Hans, um, it is mass production, but how did you manage to turn it into a range of furniture that doesn't look like mass production? It looks like they were all handmade, or maybe they are all handmade. Where does mass production start and, and the craft stop? Um, well, I must say, I, um, I also must thank Rick for, uh, for that, the developer of Hans, because of, um, he, he had to make my kind of crappy sketches into, into a usable uh, product. Um, um, 
but yeah, we found a way. Like uh, 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 we, uh, I made sketches by by hand of how the um, how the back should look, and that has been uh, put into the computer that that makes the CNC the the computer um, controlled. Uh, 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 hands, so, how do you call it? I don't know the English word for that, but anyway, like the yeah, computer that cuts out the, the back. Um, so so the, the the computer program is, um, is uh, um, I, I told by, by, by hand, I made a sketch and that's been made in a computer program, uh, which kind of can cut out the, the backs of the chair. And another thing is also like, it's only the back of the chair, which changes every time. Um, the rest of the chair is standard because of if you would redesign the whole chair every time, then then you would uh, have much more problems in production. And if you only focus on the back, then you can still make this variety, um, but you still have a lot of freedom in the in the production as well. And both of you, you both of you enjoy putting on very entertaining shows instead of just putting your product on a on a pedestal. You. There's a whole experience, particularly with your shows, Martin. And I remember Hans once you had a giant gun, army gun, in your, in your book. <laughs> given what happened in the last few months, what is the future of those kind of fairs? Can will, will we ever go back to having that kind of presentation, or will it be different in the future? Do you think? Who are you asking? Both of you. No, you know, already before COVID. Milan was changing. Milan is changed. It is enormous, enormous. It is expensive. And what we thought is that the architects, the interior designers, what we are focusing on, when they come to Milan, they just do a few spots in the city and they are there for a very short period. So uh, the chance that you see them, the chance that you can show your installation, that you can show your products is very limited. And through the last years, unfortunately, we saw less and less of the so much appreciated architects and interior designers we are working with. That's one thing. On the other thing is that uh, Milan is not a fair for people who want to buy furniture anymore. It is a fair of people who want an experience. They want to see funny, nice things like, uh, like, like in such a park, you know? And um, so I, I think this COVID, this uh, Corona is now an accelerator to, 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 to make to create a new salon like you are doing right now and it, it, it will be it will be much more uh, virtual not everybody can go anymore not everybody wants to go anymore many many other people go there but they go for the experience not for the furniture so will you still go to Milan or are you not sure yet or will you do something else smaller more local Rethinking, but everything can change tomorrow. We will go back to Milan, but we will do a very small installation. Something like uh, returning a restaurant, a small restaurant into an installation or something like that, you know. But we will not go back to uh, Lambrate or we will not go back to a large museum. We will not go back to uh, Ventura Centrale to do their large, expensive uh, installation, that does not bring the money. The investment is far too high. And what about you, Martin? Yeah, I, I agree with uh, with what Hans uh, says, uh, uh, both that it had it was changing already before uh, before COVID and, um, and for what the future will be, well, probably I will, see a little bit like I, I always react in the moment you know like I had um, the, the, the the content of my work has always to do with with where we are at that very moment and that's at this moment quite hard to tell how we will be in uh, April 2021 so um, I will have to see how Milan evolves to see what what would be my part in that 
but I I wonder if I if I would if, um, uh, I I don't think indeed like the shows as they were will will continue to be uh, like that. But at the same time, I think people want to have this experience somehow but maybe indeed more local like like actually one of the things that i did um since um since this corona time um i invited people in my studio very targeted um like uh, 30 people because that was in holland the rule you could have only 30 people if you had um at a restaurant or a party or something like that so i invited exactly 30 people who i would like to see my work and um and and I told about my work um, with the dinner and everything. And that was a kind of a very small event, but probably just as nice for everybody and, um, and effective and whatever you want to call it, because of, um, uh, because of it, it's, it's exactly the 30 people who, who I would like to share it with. And um, uh, uh, that's, that's, that's a nice alternative. So maybe they are the kind of alternatives that, uh, that works and everybody has their own way in, in, uh, in finding solutions in that. But if the whole world will go back to Milan and see there the the bigger and bigger and bigger brands making bigger and bigger shows, I wonder if that's if that's going to be like that. Um, if it's like that, then I think it, it really will build up slowly. But I think um, next year or so, it will not be like that yet. OK. Well, great. Great to see you again, Martin. OK. See you again, Hans, and I'll see you again in 30 minutes from now with Jupp van okay. Looking forward. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Um, Martin, I'd love to come to one of your dinners, by the way. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're welcome. If I can get there from London. <laughs> okay, I'll invite you. See you okay, later. See you. Bye. Bye.